Good evening. Good evening. Thank you all for coming out this evening. And on behalf of the family of John Martin, I welcome you here as we celebrate the life of a beloved man, uh, John Martin, who was also known as Sam. And in this evening, I will be referring to him as John. There's a good snapshot of the life of John and his obituary, and you may have seen it either in the newspaper or online. And it reads, John C. Martin, Sam, 62, of Elliotsburg, died on Thursday, October 19, 2017, in the University of Pennsylvania Hospital in Philadelphia. John was born January 13, 1955, in Carlisle, to the late John W. Martin and Dorothy R. Freeman Martin. He was retired from DHL, formerly Excel, Carlisle, and also had been employed by SuperValue Harrisburg and Fonestock's Auction Service. He was a member of the Landisburg Fire Company Police, Louisville Community Club, and Perry County Recycling. Surviving are his wife, Linda H. Haynes Martin, three children, Samantha M. Martin of Newport, Cheryl A. Richardson of Shermansdale, Andrew J. Martin of New Bloomfield, a sister, Deborah K. Flashman, and husband, Matthew of Carlisle, five grandchildren, Dakota Martin, Angel Souter, Tiana Richardson, Payson Martin, Braden Martin, and the niece, Jessica Flashman. The obituary goes on to describe the details of tonight's service and then says, in lieu of flowers, contributions may be made to the Landisburg Fire Company or the Lloydsville Community Club and arrangements being handled by the Nickel Funeral Home. This service this evening is certainly about John, but it's really not for John. This service is for us, uh, the ones who will be going on with our lives, to pay our respects to a dear friend, brother, father, grandfather, and <coughs> husband. In the Old Testament, the great prophet Isaiah wrote comforting words that remind us to lead on, lean on God during times of loss and trouble. In the 40th chapter of the book of Isaiah, reading from verses 28 through 31, it says, Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. It is my prayer that those words of Isaiah, those words that were inspired by Almighty God, the creator of the universe, will serve this evening to give you comfort. And I pray that these words will remind you that God is sovereign and that nothing takes him by surprise. Many of us were surprised at the passing of John, but God was not. And our Lord Jesus Christ, when he was on the earth, taught his disciples how to pray because Jesus knew that a strong prayer life, especially at times like this, is very important. The prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray is commonly known as the Lord's Prayer. And I invite everyone here to pray this prayer aloud with me. These words have been printed on a paper that was distributed as you came in, and there are slight different translations on which version you use, but this evening we will be using the word trespasses. Let us now unite together by praying the Lord's Prayer. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. In John's 62 years, he influenced many individuals, many of whom are here this evening. At this time, I extend to you the opportunity, if you wish, to share a memory of John. Uh, if you would like to, you may make your way to the front to use the microphone since this is a rather large room and it will be easier to hear you. And if there are more than a few, others may fill in on the chairs to the side and then uh, take turns. So if anyone at this time would like to share a memory, uh, you may come to the front now. Martin family, friends, fire company, and EMS personnel. Uh, it was a tragic day on October 19th when we heard that John had passed. Uh, fire Chief Carl Nace would like to his deep sympathy to the Martin family. He could not be here tonight to a number of obligations. Um, John was a, just a good man. Um, he did a lot of things that people don't know what he did. Uh, community service was was John. Um, I can remember as a young man, the baseball fields in Louisville were taken care of, um, and he still did, did that till the day. Um, he's going to be missed by the community itself, the fire company. Um, as a fire company member, he was a fire police. Um, he didn't get the praise that most people do in the fire company. He didn't put the fire out. He didn't save the people. He didn't cut them out of the car. He protected the people that did that. He was the first line of defense on the highway. Everybody's witnessed it. You come to an accident, you might be in a hurry, you might be late for work, you want to get home you get angry. He put up with that, but he got you to where you needed to go around that incident or around the fire or whatever. And he didn't, he didn't at any time ever say anything wrong about what he did. He loved it. And John will be missed by everybody. And the community doesn't know what they lost. And from the Landsberg Fire Company, and the Landisburg Ambulance Association, we extend our deepest condolences to the Martin family and to the friends. Thank you. Would anyone else like to come to the front to share a memory? Mike Jason just said here, uh, I'm the fire police captain of uh, Ickersburg. Uh, when we have a carnival ball fest, anything we need to help with over there, uh, I always can rely on John uh, and the rest of the fire police from Landsberg. Thank you. And like Jason said, we do have a tough job. We are the first line of defense protecting fire, EMS, and law enforcement. And we got to put up with everybody's, like they said, everybody's in a hurry. But uh, like you said, we get them there. But uh, about 10 years ago, I met John at their carnival. And ever since that, this is about my fifth year. He got me parked for uh, Nevin's Fawn Stock Auctions. And uh, that's the way I sail. We've 
really missed them. And uh, besides the Eckersford Fire Company, the Lions Club's going to miss John. And uh, he was a good friend. And uh, I'm going to miss him. On behalf of the Eckersford Fire Company, Eckersford Lions Club, we pass our condolence to the Martins family, and we're going to miss him over there. Also in our Seville township and uh, the village of Vickersburg. Thank you. Would anyone else like to share a memory? afterwards too with uh, snacks and I'm sure there will be plenty of sharing of memories or already have been this evening. If there are none, no more we will move on with the service and I want to thank those of you who did share your memories. It is the memories of John of course that will provide comfort for us in the days to come. This service is a celebration of the life of John and it is a time when we can comfort each other. And we can also take comfort in God's holy word. The Apostle Paul wrote two lengthy letters to the church at Corinth uh, that are included in the Holy Bible. And he begins his second letter to them with words of comfort. Reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 3 through 7 the Apostle Paul writes these words. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For as we share abundantly in Christ's sufferings, so through Christ we share abundantly in comfort too. If we are afflicted, it is for your comfort and salvation. And if we are comforted, it is for your comfort which you experience when you patiently endure the same sufferings that we suffer. Our hope for you is unshaken, for we know that as you share in our sufferings, you will also share in our comfort. The Lord bless his reading, the reading and hearing of his holy word. You know, there are few ways to express our feelings as poignant as through music. And the most popular Christian hymn ever written, hands down, is Amazing Grace. And at this time we will sing this song. Uh, the lyrics are printed in the handout you were given and this evening we are honored to have Mrs. Linda Williams uh, lead us on the keyboard 
as we sing praises to the Lord through this song. continues to speak to us this day. Even though we are grieved at our loss, your holy word gives us a promise and a hope that one day there will be a new heaven and a new earth, one that is not tainted by sin and death, and one that we long to enjoy together with you, Father. It is cause for praise when we consider that you love us so much that you will not forsake us and that one day you have promised to do away with death and the things that cause it. God, you have promised us that one day you will wipe away every tear and we eagerly look forward to that day. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. <coughs> I have to admit that I didn't have the pleasure of knowing John like many of you do, although I have seen him around the county uh, from time to time. I mean, really, he was always volunteering his time to the community, whether as a member of the fire police or in a number of other ways. So unless you live under a rock, you'd, it would really be hard to miss John. As a preacher, myself, sometimes it's more difficult to come up with the proper words to honor the memory of a person that I didn't know very well. But with John, I don't think that's the case. He lived a very full life and he influenced a lot of people. And after talking with some friends of his and family members, others who knew him well, 
there was a theme that kept coming up that everyone was talking about. And if I boil it down to one word, it would be service. If you knew John, you knew that he was always involved in some kind of community activity or another because that's the kind of guy he was. He had a heart for the community. And to me, it's very nice to hear that there are still people around who are social, who want to get involved, who want to help other people, who aren't so self-centered and think that the world revolves around them. With some people, it's all about what I want and me first. But with John, it was about what he could do for others. You may be familiar with the words of President John F. Kennedy when he said, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. That seemed to be John's motto also. When I think of John, I think of service. And, you know, the Bible has an awful lot to say about serving others. You can really get a good idea of how often a certain subject is talked about in the Bible by looking at how often certain words appear in Scripture. For example, if you look up the word love, you'll find that it occurs some 442 times in the Bible. Love is spoken of quite often. Well, I looked up the word serve, along with its derivative forms such as serving, servants, and so forth, and these words together appear more than 1,200 times in the Bible. In other words, these words appear an average of almost 20 times in each of the 66 books. It's very clear that God thinks a lot of us serving others. During his time on earth, Jesus himself spoke an awful lot about service, and it's one of those stories that I want to share with you this evening. It helps to give you a little bit of context behind it. So the upshot is that one day, a mother of two of Jesus' disciples, James and John, comes to Jesus and asks him, uh, to give a prominent position to her two sons in heaven, right next to Jesus. Jesus tells her that one's position in heaven is determined by God the Father alone, so he cannot do that. But when the other disciples overhear this conversation, they become angry. That's when Jesus sets everyone straight, as he often had to do. And he says that in heaven, it's not about who's ruling. It is about who's serving. I'll read four short verses that follow those words in the book of Matthew. Reading from chapter 20 and verses 25 through 28. But Jesus called them to him and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. It shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be your slave. Even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. May the Lord's blessing be added to the reading and to the hearing of his holy word. Sometimes we turn on the television and we see celebrities donating money to a variety of organizations, uh, maybe money to a hospital here or a library over there. And it always seems like they have a camera crew at the ready to catch it on tape uh, to show it to everyone. Show everyone what a good person they are, that they are donating what they are doing. Now, don't get me wrong, if someone like Oprah Winfrey, for example, writes a check out, a very large check, to help girls in Africa, I'm glad she's doing that. And I'm glad she's not being a miser and being greedy about the money that she has earned. But it still makes a person wonder what the motivation is behind that. 
when it is broadcast on TV? Is it some kind of a PR stunt to promote some kind of new venture she's involved in? Or is it truly done for the benefit of those girls in Africa? I don't think there ever was a camera crew at the ready when John Martin volunteered his time to the Landisburg Fire Company or to the Lloydsville Community Club or even when he was at Heritage Days. Yet John still did all those things because it's what he loved to do. Even though I personally think our society has gone overboard in our adulation of celebrities, there still seems to be a sizable portion of the population that still appreciates the unsung hero, the person who doesn't get all the glitz and glamour. As a longtime resident of Perry County, I myself have come to appreciate these unsung heroes. I would call them real people. And what I mean by that is real people are the ones who make things happen. They bust their tails every day and they're not flashy about it and they're not showy about it. They simply show up every day and they get things done and they do so for the benefit of others. Perry County has a lot of real folks out there. Just look at John. He was a real guy. I already talked about how he served the community club, but he did even more than that. While holding down a job and serving the fire company and serving the community club, he also found time to coach baseball. For him, it was just another way to serve. The selfish people that I talked about earlier, the me first people, I think they could learn a thing or two by the way John lived his life. Moving on now, <laughs> we do get busy, don't we? Sometimes too busy, I'm afraid to say. But this evening, the question is, are we too busy to help others? Are we too busy to serve our community? Is our focus on me first and satisfying myself and my desires with no regard to anyone else? I hope that answer is no. John was not too busy, and he certainly will be missed as he leaves the very big shoes to fill in the community. But John will never be replaced. We would never want to do that. There is a lot of slack to pick up, though, and we do that through our willingness to serve others. This room is filled with people who love and admire John, and the number, of people, the number of people here tonight is a testament to the legacy that he leaves behind. Think of the words of Jesus in our passage tonight when he said, Whoever would be great among you must be your servant. Jesus lived out those words every single day of his life. There was even a time near the end of Jesus' life when he stooped down and knelt before each of his disciples, other than Judas. He pulled out a wash bowl and a towel, and he washed the feet of his disciples. When he did this, his disciples were beside themselves. Here he was, their great teacher, that they looked up to humbling himself before them, doing such a dirty task that was only reserved for the lowest of household slaves to do. Do we notice how Jesus taught? Jesus didn't write a bunch of books about how to serve others. He didn't lecture on the subject in the most prestigious universities. What he did was he showed people every day what service looked like. And you can be sure that Jesus' act of washing the feet of his disciples, which probably just took a minute or two for each one, lasted a lot longer in the minds of those men than any lecture ever would. We know that it was many decades later that one of his disciples, John, thought so much of that moment that he wrote about this event in the gospel that bears his name. Shifting from the Apostle John 
to John Martin now. I'm sure everyone here thinks an awful lot about John, and we have unique memories of him. All of our memories are different. Even though I was never formally introduced to John, I can tell you one thing for sure that I do know about John, though. And that is that at this very moment, John knows more about eternity than any of us will ever know while we are on the earth. At home, I have a number of bookshelves with volumes full of theories and interpretations of theology written by men much smarter than I will ever be. But even none of those authors, at the time they wrote those volumes, ever knew eternity like John does right now. Earlier I talked about real people. And well, eternity is the most real concept you will ever encounter in your life. And it's the most important decision you will ever make. Where are you going to spend eternity? In our scripture passage this evening are the words of Jesus Christ who said a big part of his ministry of service was to give his life as a ransom for many. What this means is if you have true saving faith that Jesus Christ is who he is, that he lived a sinless life, that he was crucified for your sins and that he arose on the third day as predicted, if you have the faith that all of that is true, then you can also take part in that ransom that he paid and have confidence of knowing where you will spend eternity with God and not separated from him. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I urge you to make that decision this evening because none of us ever know how much time we have left. And eternity is not anything we would ever want to play around with. I want to close out shortly this evening by giving you two challenges. One is what I just outlined. And that is a challenge to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life if you have not already done so. You can ask Jesus into your heart right now. And the second challenge this evening is this. I think we all know that this world is not often a very good place to live in. What with all the hatred and killing and so forth, you turn on the news and you can't get away from it. Now imagine what difference it would make if every person here in this room tonight did one nice, unexpected thing for another person. Just one thing. So I challenge everyone here to make a promise in the memory of John to do one nice, unexpected thing for another person in the coming days. John lived a life of service, so how about you? It doesn't have to be a huge thing like give a thousand bucks to someone in need. And if you want to do that, by the way, I will humbly accept your gift. <laughs> But seriously, it could be just something so simple like putting someone's cart away for them at the Walmart or calling someone that you know can't get out too often and ask them if there's anything you can get for them when you're already at the store. Or maybe even pay that person a visit face to face. Get off your smartphone. Get the focus off of yourself and take notice of those people around you and make the world a better place. Now, some of you may say, I'd like to do some of those things, but maybe I'm one of those people who can't get out too often. Well, no worries there. Just pick up your phone and call a friend just to chat. Brighten someone's day in an unexpected way. Let me tell you that I think this technological revolution that we are experiencing is actually making people more thirsty for physical contact with another person and more companionship. The possibilities of service are endless, and the only limit to the service you can perform is the amount of love in your heart. John Martin was always serving others, so it's time for us to follow suit and be that light for another person. And lastly, remember 
that Jesus served others by giving his life for them, and he had no personal benefit whatsoever in doing that. That's how much he loves each of us. So let our love of John Martin be seen in the ways that we serve others. Let us now go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you giving you praise. We should not just praise you on the good days, but on the bad days as well, for it is written, Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? Father God, please touch our lives as only you can, and give us comfort as only you can. We have celebrated the life of John Martin, and we give you thanks for our time of celebration for the life of John. Be with each and every one of us here as we leave this place and continue to work in all of our lives as only you can. We pray in your holy name. Amen. Inasmuch as Almighty God, in his wise providence, permitted the removal of the soul of John Martin, we therefore bear his remains here to the place prepared for them, that ashes may return to ashes and dust to dust. Let us unite our hearts in prayer just one more time. Heavenly Father, eternal God, we are gathered here today to celebrate the life of our beloved John Martin. We are conflicted, Father, because on, we are torn between the emotions of sadness on the one hand uh, for our loss, but also a feeling of joy for, that the memories give us. We pray, we pray now for your Holy Spirit to guide us and to comfort us as we comfort each other. In your holy name we pray. Amen. And now hear the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. This day, tomorrow, and until Jesus returns. Amen. Please stay seated until further instructions are given.
This now concludes our service, and at this time you may be dismissed and make your way to the other room as the ladies have prepared refreshments for everyone. Thank you.